sleep slow. Amen. <laughs> Someone says, what time do you get up? I start getting up at 4 in the morning. Go to the bathroom, go back to bed. Amen. <laughs> That's in the Bible somewhere. Yep. And uh, so forth. I'm going to talk to you today about the Christian life. And uh, my ministry is getting people to turn. And uh, you turn it and uh, so forth. Repentance is this. It's, it's nothing spooky and foaming at the mouth and falling on the ground. That's not in the Bible. Here's repentance. It's turning. That's, ter that's repentance. Repent. Turn. Re means re again. And so uh, we make the Christian life so hard. But the uh, kind of young people I get coming in and uh, from all walks of life, politicians, governors, uh, mayors, I've led a lot of them to Christ and so forth. Uh, they want to do, uh, Steve Wilco wants me to come on his uh, TV show now, and I've been putting him off about four years and so forth. I said, Steve, one of them people get in my face, I'll knock them out in Jesus' name. And, oh, no, no, they won't, they won't mess with you. I said, yeah, I know they won't. And, uh, but anyway, I've been putting off him. Sally Jesse Raphael wants me on her show and all this jazz. I'm not into that stuff. I'm here, I'm, I'm on a, I'm on a, uh, Paul says we are a spectacle unto the world. I'm out here for the, for the churches of the Lord Jesus Christ to get, uh, I go in jails, I go in mental wards. I find a lot of Christians in there, by the way. And, uh, but I try to help them. That's not funny. I mean, they're in there, man, and they get me out of here. No, I'm getting out of here. And uh, to make sure you don't lock that door behind me, man. And uh, I mean, uh, I've, I've seen some Lulus, man. I've seen people float off the bed. I, know, I am not charismatic. I'm Baptist, okay? But I know this book deals with that stuff. It's a mind game. It's a witchcraft out there. And that, what you talk about uh, sorcery, uh, that's a witchcraft. That's drugs. What it is, they're going to steal your mind and put on that stuff. They, they want to give me more stuff. I said, I don't want that stuff. They said, uh, they asked me the day, they said, what kind of dope you take? I said, AV 1611. <laughs> so I never heard of that. It's called B-I-B-L-E. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're one of them? Yeah, I'm one of them, Okay. And, uh, but over here in Philippians, now here's Paul writing in the book. You, you got a moody or depressed attitude. And the Broloff said, knock off the disc and get courage. Amen. And uh, discourage. And, uh, but Philippians, Paul wrote this in a Mamertine prison, 25 feet below the prison. His excrement and his waist in, in the cell with him. Never got out. But he wrote, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. How's your day doing? Hello. But he writes, Philippians, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I, uh, the most people I come in, uh, I'd rather work with atheists than Christians. Let's let that sink in. Because Christians know too stinking much. Well, they think they do. And they come in, I got, I've taken in more pastor's sons that tell me about the pastor. I say, I ain't worried about your daddy. I know he's human. I'm on the same mold he is. Was sin or sin? Hello. Gee, Wally, <laughs> okay, my man Beaver, amen. You don't like Beaver, you're not saved. And uh, Wally Cleaver. And uh, look, we brought flip in the shop. I'm, I'm, I'm in a witty mood this morning. I'm getting hungry. My sugar's going up. We'll take care of it after a while. Every time, every time I bend, my mouth opens, and so I'm working on that. Uh, and so flip in chapter 2, look over here at verse number uh, 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have obeyed, uh, always obeyed, watch this, wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. The test of your character is what you do when you're by yourself. Yes. When, you're, when your pastor's not around and people not around, when your mom and dad's not around, what you do, well, well, that's the real you. That's the real you. I remember one time at Brother Olaf, he had about 150, 100 boys on his bars, and I, I couldn't reach them. I was down there working, and some, two other boys, uh, three other boys burnt the dorm down, so I... Brother Olaf bought a floating barge, and so I couldn't get them all. So I stuck speakers in their room with a man, and with an intercom and didn't tell them. So whenever they talked at nighttime, that was my sermon outline for chapel the next morning. <laughs> man, you ought to hear those eyeballs, watch those eyeballs come out of their head. I remember one guy, he was talking about he couldn't wait to get home and see Mary on Maple Street, hey, amen. I said, there's some of you guys here in chapel, you got a girlfriend named Mary, and she lives on Maple Street. Man, they walked around like that. Never a man spake like this before, hey, amen. So you better watch out. Your preacher may got a speaker around here listen to what you're talking about, hey, amen. Use your head or woodpecker does, hey, amen. All right, God bless you. Amen. But verse 12, wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my uh, presence only, but much more in my absence. That's character. 
Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you both the will and the do his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputings. Quit griping. Amen. That ain't my job. You give me a job, I'll do it. I'll mop the floors. I'll wash the commode. I do it in my own, own ministry. Amen. And you learn by doing. Learn by Lamentations 1 4 says, learn to do well. Yeah. Those are the four tenses. Learn that much. You've got to be teachable. Well, get down to preaching. We'll put the cheese on the pizza. Hold on. But you need to get teachable. If you're not teachable, you're not reachable. Amen. I don't care what profession you're in or what job you're in, you must be teachable. Uh, number two, to do. That's action. It takes time to get something done. But he says, well, learn to max out with what you're doing. Mature in that area. That's deep. And learn to do well. Four words, learn to do well. Gee, Wally. You can do that. You want to be a housewife? Learn to do well. Want to be a good husband, a husband, a provider? It ain't your job for your wife to pay the bills. Son, that's your job. Hey, my wife don't work. I want my baby home. Mm-hmm. Hello. This big boy gets happy when he comes home. I'll be chasing mom around that house. Karen, you know you're watching right now. Hey, Amen. I want some meatloaf when I get home, too. Hey, Amen. Real meatloaf with all that stuff from Cracker Barrel. I mean, I want the real stuff. And... Uh, but no, we, uh, Ailey, I showed up right there. All right. That's in the Bible somewhere. I think Song, Song of Solomon's out somewhere over there. <clears throat> she said, cut, all, all she says is, hurry home, big boy. Man, the Batman, boom, 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 Batman, now it's fat man. Amen. I'm coming home, you know. <laughs> Amen. Hey, hey, let me preach to you. Uh, here's what I'm going to preach to you here tonight. Look at verse 15 this morning. That you may be blameless. It didn't say sinless. It said blameless. Blameless and then harmless. Most of my problems come from Christians. They fight each other. Because they're not doing nothing. Hello, they're not doing nothing. They're fighting each other. They're always saying, hey man, I can do that. Well, do it. <laughs> do it. Uh, Jack Howe says, never give a job to a lazy man. Give it to a busy man. Look, I never finished the ninth grade. I mean, I mean, for driver's ed, we used stolen cars. That's how bad it was, okay? And that's the, that's the school I ran with. And um, uh, I didn't know how to fight, but I learned real fast. I, I wasn't a fighter. Motor Brothers were fighters. I had three of them. And so uh, some guys got me in the bathroom and worked me over a little bit. I said, sucker, this will never happen again. And so I got me a whiskey bottle filled it full of water and opened the window and stuck that sucker outside the window in the bathroom. Use your head. Come on now. And so when they jumped me the next time, I was banging them in the head with old Jimmy Bean whiskey, but Jimmy Bean bottle won't will not break. Uh, amen. That's the kind he used to drink back there. And uh, uh, but uh, Jim, uh, Jimmy Bean, I cracked him in the head. They wrote me up for it, and they they brought in seven guys that took me out of the bathroom. After all of them got their cracked head open, and they looked at me and said, "You beat all these guys up." I said, "No, that whiskey bottle did." And uh, funny thing, those guys never bothered me again. They never felt led of the Lord to bother me again. Yeah. Amen. And uh, I met some of those guys years later. Man, you remember you cracked me in the head, I'll crack you again in Jesus' name. But no, we, we became good friends. And this week, um, I got a call last week from a friend of mine who was in the gangs with. We had gang fights and would steal cars, whatever, strip them, whatever. And uh, you don't know about that. I like to be and said, I wish the part, you, the, the part you leave out, you advantage us. That's a juicy part, amen. And, uh, but uh, he called me to do a funeral. So this Wednesday, I'm doing a funeral with a bunch of ex-gang members. And that, and that they're all safe. One gang member, because I wouldn't stay for the party there, one, he got mad at him and cussed me out. And I was on my way back down to Brent Baptist Church, and I got saved. I said, I'm going back to Brent. I want to come out and say goodbye to you. He said, Jack, come on in the bar. I said, no, I know what's inside there. Goofy girls, guys, stolen car parts, whatever, chop shops. He cussed me out real good. He had cuss words. He made them up, man. I just, I, I got over. I said, man, I'm going back down to Florida. I'm going to get out of Detroit. I got saved two weeks later. That guy got so mad. He followed me all over the country and found out he thought I was, he thought I was doing a, a, a we call it a, a rig down in Florida. He thought I was ripping people off down there. And he called people, checked me out. He said, no, Jackson Bible College. First, he thought I was in Barber College. He tells everybody in Detroit, Jack's going to be a barber. He's in Barber College. I said, no, I'm in Bible College. And then the guys would come home, hey, Jack, would you cut my hair? I said, no, we don't want to cut your hair. Ain't no, no. Long story short, that, 
That guy went to a church and he got saved. Amen. His first name is Danny. And uh, they were stilettos. We were Bagley boys and, um, and so forth. And But Danny got saved. He preached for 34 years. Wow. I'll see him the second time this Wednesday in 34 years. Wow. I'm going to preach to sister in law They called me and said, I can't preach the funeral, Jack. Would you preach it? I said, I'd be glad to. It'll be out of my church, Silver Lane Baptist Church. That's the power of the gospel. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give the word of God. going to give you something to help you with today. And uh, look over here, uh, verse 15. Here, now we're going to get down to business. Uh, do, uh, do, do all things without murmuring and disputing. Quit griping and complaining about what you have. Murmuring is, is uh, silent gospel, go, uh, uh, criticism. Remember the Bible said they murmured in their tents. <laughs> How come Brother Castle didn't shake my hand? <laughs> that's, that's murmuring. Probably because you had bad breath. I don't know. Uh, look at look, uh, that you may be blameless. I didn't say sinless, but blameless. It's not your fault. Blameless, uh, harmless in the sons of without a rebuke. Watch it in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. You're living in a perverse. I'm, 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 I'm going to just throw some things at you now. I'm sick and tired of, uh, and I, I know a lot of TV people. They always ask me for interviews. I ain't got time to mess with them. And uh, uh, so what's your biggest thing? I said, I'm tired of seeing men trying to act like women and women trying to act like men. That Bible says over there in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 3 that women and boys are going to rule over them. You know what they got? They got kids running the things in the nation, and they got women. And the lady, that's not your job to run a nation and uh, so forth. And uh, I don't put women down. No, no, I, I keep mine up on a pedestal. I get more benefits that way. Amen. And uh, so forth. If you treat her like a queen, she's going to treat you like a king. Hello, big boy. And uh, But you got you got people running these uh, juvenile pension homes, ladies there. Shouldn't, uh, a lady had uh, helped the two inmates that escaped from Pennsylvania. She helped them escape. I remember that about three years ago. I mean, she should be working at Walmart somewhere. She didn't have the mentality to do so. They worked her. Remember, a woman is guided and feared by her ears. That's how the, Eve, the devil got Eve. He didn't get it with her eyes. He got Adam with his eyes. A man falls in love with what he sees. Hey, hey, baby, what's up? That's what a man falls in love with. A woman falls in love with what, you, what she hears. That's why you beat her down all the time. She, she's going to have a rough time following you. You've got to be a wimp to put down a woman. I'm going to say it again. You've got to be a wimp to put down a woman all the time. Lift them up. I got some brother-in-laws. We talked to them years ago. You touch my sister, I'm going to change your life, sucker, and uh, so forth. Man, they became missionaries. My brother-in-law did. Oh, Jack's coming over. But don't you tell him nothing, okay? I love him. But here's what I'm going to preach to you right here. Look at verse 15. That you may be blameless and, and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine lights in the world. Watch it. Uh, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither have labored in vain. Now then, I want you to take your Bible and go to John chapter 5. John chapter 5, quickly. This is about John the Baptist here, coming on the scene. And he was a forerunner for Jesus Christ. That was his second cousin. Mary and Martha were first cousins. His, uh, Mary and Elizabeth were first cousins, and so forth. Uh, I guess he called all in the family, amen. And, uh, but over here, verse number 33, John 5, 33. Ye send, you sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. John 5, 34. But I have received not testimony from man. These things I say that you might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light. And ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. Yeah. Father, thank you for the word of God. Help me be a blessing to your people. And uh, Lord, thank you for the word of God. And uh, thank you, Lord, for your goodness. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Two preachers came to uh, uh, Chicago one year, and one of them came all the way from Michigan, a young, young preacher man, and he wanted to meet up with A.W. Tozer. And he came in Mr. Tozer's office, and we, they talked there, and, and he asked this young man, he says, uh, what do you want to do with your life? He says, oh, I want to stay right here in certain, certain place and so forth. And uh, a lot of times the preacher will want to hear you out. He'll try to draw things out of you like a, a lawyer will. <laughs> yeah, he'll draw it out, all right. And, uh, but, uh, but, he'll, uh, but he asked him, he said, what do you want to do with your life? And he told A.W. Tozer what he wanted to do. He says, you know what? He says, uh, do you want to burn or do you want to shine? See, burning is location. Shining is premiation. Brother Castle doesn't burn, he shines. 
I said, he shines. He goes on. I mean, look at the suits. He glitters. I mean, no, just kidding. And uh, <laughs> I love those suits. I wish I could wear them. I can't. But, uh, but he's a burning and a shining light. I don't want to just burn. I want to shine. Now, I'm going to talk to you about that today in these next few moments on burning. Are you burning or are you shining? Uh, many years ago, we were, I was with Brother Roloff back down in Texas, and we are uh, down there catching fish. On a bad night, we would catch about 500 pounds of speckled trout about that long. Plus the trot lines, we had unlimited fishing back then. We, all, we lived on the intercoastal. I told you about dealing with the Navy and selling stuff off. I was buying real food down there, and I don't need health food and so forth. And by process of elimination, amen. And uh, but the brother, then, then we're catching these big old uh, black dot red drums, about, uh, oh, probably 15, 16, 20, 22 pounds, you know, about 30 of them a day. And we're flaying all this fish and so forth. And, uh, and then one day, uh, one of our boys got a snake bite. We had to get him out of there. I made sure he wasn't faking it. Of course, we had about 60, 70 guys on the island. And uh, I'd already gotten saved. And I've already been through the crime and justice system and uh, willing and dealing. And, and as I told you the other day, I met Mr. Hoffa. That's who my father worked for. My dad uh, delivered messages for him. And he had polio. We had 10 kids. We lived in Jeffrey's Projects in Detroit. And, uh, I mean, we were so poor we couldn't pay attention. But I had a mother who knew how to cook. My sister cannot cook. I, I don't don't trust your sister's cooking. Amen. And uh, but uh, I got her. And so when she's 80 years old, I told her, she asked me today, "You want to come over?" So no, I'll meet you at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll divert attention over here. Amen. And uh, but uh, but my mother knew how to make those big old biscuits. The hard it would be the hard to be on top and the uh, crunchy on the bottom. And she makes those pinto beans with real fried potatoes. She put the lid on top, get the steam coming in this way. Put the onions on the potatoes and mix them up and have some mac and cheese and pork chop. It change your life. And uh, and so forth. But anyways, uh, I got going there and and, uh, and uh, going down there, I knew how to hustle the food and get things going for good. I'm talking about for good. When I got right, I got right. Amen. Hey, the things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. Hey, the things I used to do, I just don't do them anymore. There's been a great change since I've been born again. The places I used to go, I don't go there anymore. The places I used to go, I just don't go there anymore. Hey, the places I used to go, I don't go there anymore. There's been a great change since I've been born again. There's been a great, great change, change since I've been born. There's been a great, great change since I've been born. There's been a great, great change since I've been born. There's been a great change since I've been born again. Well, you always so happy in front of you. I got bad days too. Car breaks down, wheel falls off a stinking rim, and I'm going on the highway 60 miles an hour, and uh, you know, drunks fighting upstairs in the motel and acting crazy. My uh, my dog gets in a fight with another dog on the leash, and oh, you're always going to have the mishaps of life. Yeah. But oh, that's what you got to get through. And uh, we get down there, and uh, we, Brother Wall said, "Now, Jack," he says, uh, "I'm going to land the plane on the island. It's about to, about 11 o'clock at night." I said, I got landing lights, but you got to put all those smudge lights out. There's about 100 of them. I want 50 of them on each side, about 20 feet apart. That'll give me about a half a mile runway. It was, it was wintertime, February. The winds are about the, the three feet swells, and I've been in more in the deep. Paul talked about, woo, them waves are rough. And don't ever go to, to a deep water with a, shout, with a small boat, okay? <laughs> It'd be, I hear you knocking, but you can't come in, okay? And, uh, and I got in there, and uh, we got up there. He said, now, wait a minute. He said, but when you put those smudge lights out, you got to make sure that the glass is clean from the last time because the light won't come through the glass if the soot is on the glass or soot, depends where you're from. We got in there, and, and I knew he was in the air. We had about, we had about 30 minutes to get those, uh, those uh, lights out. He's going to land right on the island with that airplane to get this board and take him into the... Uh, he, he's, he, he's, he, he got bit by a rattlesnake. We got the lights all cleaned up real fast. We, put, we used an oil-based rag to get that set off that glass. And we had 50 of them all lined out. And he landed, and he got that board. He took them off. We took our glasses up. I said, guys, take the glasses right back off and wipe the glass before you put it back in. See, that's faithfulness when no one else is watching. Yeah. The real you is what you do when you're by yourself. That's the real you. Amen. We put all these glasses back in, Brother Danny, get them all printed. But here's what I want to say to you. As a young man named Tom Malone was sitting talking to A.W. Tozer, he says, Tom, do you want to burn 
or do you want to shine? Tom Malone stayed in Pontiac, Michigan for 50 years. He built a great school, produced a Vince Massa. Many, many preachers came through there. And I'm coming to you today as an older preacher. I'm not done yet, but an older preacher. I'm going to build another rescue mission. I'm going to build a home for men and women in Detroit. I've got no, I have probably have, out of 10 preachers, i got about eight negatives. I said, well, I must be doing something right. They think I shouldn't do it. They think I should just be an evangelist, drive a van and be an evangelist. You'll catch that later on. I'm, a, I'm an evangelist. I drive a van. And, um, I, said, <laughs> and I said, no, I'm going to go home and do what I'm supposed to do. So I'm going to talk to you these next few minutes on a burning and a shining light. And I don't want anybody can just burn. I want to shine. Man, I want to shine. He said some, Bible says some bear some 30-fold, some bear some 60-fold, some bear some 100-fold. In the Christian life, as I, as I go through life, I go through all through Detroit, and some of them still left back in the 60s and so forth, and I see people I work from. I uh, grew up, went to ministry. They went to this school, this school, but they kept their job. They got the good retirement. I can't get them on the street street preaching. I can't. I go street preaching. I pass. Why? Because it's, it's good for my pride. Hey, folks, I'm Jack Patterson. I'm going to tell you today how to get born again by the grace of God. I just preach to them. And I get out of there and leave, you know, and everybody like, where were those? I, had to go, I go down to the projects and uh, uh, I take, uh, by the way, when I go street preaching time, I'll buy a hundred che double cheeseburgers. Yeah. It's hard to tell a man or woman uh, that Jesus loves them on an empty stomach. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. And I, hey, I'm just trying to tell you, if I can do something that, you can do something for that. And all my brothers got saved. They got right. My brother was uh, going to be a heavyweight champion of the world. Uh, the same church that uh, J. Frank Norris built in Detroit today is a boxing gym that trained all. That's where Ali trained. Or uh, um, uh, I forget the guy. Uh, he trained for the Ali fight. He didn't. Tra he didn't train at the big gym at the Crunk's gym, but he trained in the same gym that Beach and Vic and J. Frank Norris had a church. That gym is still there today. I gave him a testimony to that guy about three months ago. He said, Jack, he said, my, my church is all black, but they would love to hear a white boy like you. And uh, I didn't bother me. He called me boy, you know, and so forth. That's that television stuff, getting in your brain. Hey, get that poison out of your system out of there, okay? And so I'm going back to give a King Solomon Baptist Church, amen. And then I told him, I said, look, when I come here, I don't want no white food. I want some soul food, okay? Soul radio. And uh, he got in there, and he said, you are crazy. Yeah, but I'm a nut, but I scoot on the right boat, amen. Yeah. And then another church over here that uh, uh, J. Frank, uh, Dr. Vic had is called Temple Baptist Church. Uh, I walked in there and, and talked to that preacher. I said, don't you have a restroom behind that wall there? He said, how do you know this? I grew up in this church. Uh, and it, it sat about 7,000. Dr. Ruckman used to preach there every August. And uh, Dr. Vic had that church left there. I think he was there until about 75. And uh, that's the same year Mr. Hoffa disappeared. One mile from that church. And what people didn't know that uh, uh, Dr. Vic would go there every day at noontime and have lunch and eat a salad. And they, as soon as he got up, he saw Mr. Hoffa sitting there in the booth, Jimmy Hoffa. Where was he buried? That's so stupid. he came come out of prison. Fritz Simmons had took over the union that he had already made deals with the government, real smooth operator. And they kicked him out. But he, wanted, he fought to get his union back. And then they took him out. But before they took him out, Mr. Vic was in that restaurant. He walked up to him and said, can I sit down and talk to you? He told this to his grandson. He got permission from Mr. Hoffa to sit down. And he told him how to get saved. Mr. Hoffa said he's going to trust the Catholic uh, the, uh, church, the, the priest. And then Mr. Vic preached unto him Jesus Christ. Amen. How that Christ died for his sin. Mr. Vic was not a bossy man. He wasn't a pushy man. He was an organizer. He was a businessman. He, uh, he trained on the J. Frank Norris along with the other Bible teacher out there. They used a six-point Sunday school system that exploded their Sunday school. Jack Treber uses it in California. And they were running 10 and 15,000. J. Frank Norris, before he left, he preached at Belle Isle, Detroit, on an island of 40,000 people. That's, that's, that's the history of the Temple Baptist Church. By the way, that church right there, they used to have Dr. Ruckman up every August on over at Camp Chautauqua in Ohio. And I got to see all that stuff as a young preacher boy. And now then all those guys are gone. The Roloffs are gone. The Ruckmans are gone. I got two Germans that put me in the fight. But my mind goes back to Tom Malone and A.W. Tozer. Do you want to burn or do you want to shine? Do you want to burn in your home or do you want to shine? I'm not just talking to men. I'm talking to people here. 
God needs some godly women. God needs some godly children to listen once in a while. Amen. Pay attention. Girls, guard your ears against these punky boys. Yep. Hello, I taught my niece to jap slap them. Put a jap slap on. What's a jap slap? Well, they'll never forget it. <laughs> oh, I've been jap slapped. <laughs> and uh, I, I love my nieces. I love all of them. They think I'm an old fogey. But now they got kids. Uncle Jack, you're the wisest man I've ever met in my life. <laughs> I, I tried to tell you that 20 years ago, you stinking rascal. But I'm telling you, I, uh, many years ago, I, had a, I was out there with a hurry-up thing, but I was out in Washington State, and I, I was at a car auction one day, and I, uh, I was at an auction, and this guy saw my guys. He said, look, he said, who are these guys? I haven't seen guys look like this in 20 years. I said, well, I'm Jack Patterson. I run Reclamation Ranch over here in Othello, Washington. I was there about 14 years. I had about maybe 2,000 guys come to those uh, dorms, and uh, but what about 80% turnaround rate? The state has about 8%, and uh, they work on the outside. We work on the inside. Remember that. Your problem is on the inside, not the outside. Yeah. It's on here, deep, 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 deep. And uh, so I go over there, and he said, man, I said, why do you guys all say yes, sir, and no, sir? He said, did they respect you? And I said, well, because I respect them. We respect each other. And uh, long story short, he said, hey, I'd like for you to come to my, I'd like for you to come to my, uh, my farm. I said, I have a little small apple farm. <laughs> apple farm, uh, almost, a, almost uh, uh, shall we say, uh, a million apple trees, a small apple farm. I get over there, and he said, hey, I'd like for you to preach to my gang members. We have a city we hit, we, uh, for our, our migrant workers. I went and preached to 1,400 of them, gave them a testimony. Many of them trusted Christ. He offered me a full-time job just to stay here. I met him at a, I met him at a car lot, I mean a car auction. He saw how my guys were respectful to people. They used to be druggies and all tattooed up and yes, sir, saying yes, sir, and thank you, sir. He wanted to know what changed them. I said, the word of God did. He said, oh, don't tell me you're a King James. Yeah, I'm a King James, not a Queen James. I'm a King James. He said, well, we're NRV. I said, well, help yourself. That's all I said, help yourself. I'm a King James man. I said, but if you want, to, you want a good product, you better get you a King James. Yeah. He liked that. He said, you know what, Brother Patterson, would you like to go to Mexico for me? I said, I just met you. Why would I want to go to Mexico? He said, there's an orphanage down there that needs some work with some of you men. Can I fly you guys down there and stay a month? He said, it's a Catholic orphanage. I said, yeah. Once he said Catholic, hey, it's, oh, water material, soul winning time. Amen. And he says, you're in the jungle. I said, the lion sleeps tonight. That's what he wanted. <laughs> They're going to be in that jungle. Yee. All right, old things have passed away. And, uh, but some things still can become new. And um, hey, old is gospel. That's what Lanny Hasbrook says. And uh, so, we get down, so we get down there to this, uh, uh, down on this island down there, I mean, in, in this orphanage, and, and, and he said, we start preaching and so forth, and we got cleaned the place up, and there's about 10 of us guys down there. And we stayed there a month. We went back five years in a row in a row. We never dropped our standards, and we didn't beat them up. We didn't get down there to represent us as Baptists. We went there as believers in Christ and Christians. And they got down there and one, 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 one after one. Now, we led about 70 kids to Christ. Now, wait a minute. We're down there in this orphanage where these kids are deformed. Three eyes. Arms on the back of their shoulder. Real gross to look at. But I looked through them. I love them. They couldn't say my name. Hey, 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 yank. I'd make up a nickname for them. Hey, you, you. I'd say it back to him, you know, and he'd laugh. He'd wake me up. Hey, come on, let's go breakfast. breakfast. They'd get me up about five in the morning. Oh, get out of my room, kid. He wanted a fellowship with Brother Jack. We got him all over there, and, and uh, we, we got talking to him. And, and then right before, we, oh, right before we, we, we wanted to leave, the Catholic priest came up to me. He said, you gave me a, a thing called a, this is your life in Spanish when you got here. He said, that thing bothered A Jesuit priest, he's way up there over Mexico. He said, uh, can I hire you to move here and take over this orphanage? I said, let me think about it. He said, I don't have to stay Catholic. It can just be Christian, but we, we like what you do here. I said, no, I'm going to stay in the States, but I'll come here every year. I, I went there every year for 10 years. I took my guys down there. It was a wake-up call for my guys. Wait a minute. But on that fifth year there, where we went to Huatuco, uh, where the water and swimming and so forth, playing volleyball with the kids and so forth. I said, guys, just, just 
I don't want them to hear about where you came from. I don't want them to hear about where you're going. Amen. And that Catholic priest looked at me, preacher, and he said, I'm no longer trusting Mary for the forgiveness of my sins. Amen. I'm trusting Jesus Christ as well. I was at the airport. I started crying. Well, I wasn't wearing suspenders in those days, and I was a little thinner, and he comes up and gives me a big hug. I mean, a, a way do I get there? He gives me, and you know what happens when your belly goes in, fellas? Your pants will come down. <laughs> I'm at an airport in, a front of, in front of about 50 people from China. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And this, this priest hugs me so tight, and, I, and he hugs me with my hands behind my side. And I can't move at all. And he said, I love you, brother. I said, hey, wait a minute, man. My preachers are coming. Like I and I had these old huggy, stinking pants on. Snap. I didn't have any. I didn't have no suspenders on. Now, now I wear them. I take a shower in these, baby, now. And, uh, and man, all of a sudden, my pants came down. Oh, yo, yo, yo. They're taking pictures from China. Somewhere in China, the blue moon's over. The white moon's over there showing somewhere. And that really happened. And a uh, night, the word's out. Long story short, I'm going to tell you, I, I pulled out of there. He said, hey, he said, is that, that, then, I, then I get back. And then the, the owner of this other place, he said, Jack, I need you. I need you for something. He said, my daughter's in trouble. I don't know where she's at. Got off the plane. I said, look, I just got back from Mexico. I said, uh, let me see if I can find your daughter. I called my guys. I said, look, you go ahead and wear what you got to wear, but don't, I don't wear no suit and tie. We found her in the motel doing some rough stuff. We caught this guy and had her. I told my guys, I want the headlights broken out. I want the windshield broken out with baseball bats. That's how I do business. I mean, they had your daughter. I mean, just, what was he doing? They weren't reading the Bible. Yeah. Hello, that's somebody's little girl. Yeah. We got her back. And then he said, we're going to put her in a, in a Christian school, and you pick it. So I put her in the best Christian school in the country. <laughs> out in New York, got her life straightened out, married, got, got kids now. And she texts me about once a week. Hey, Brother Jack, when are you coming back out? I miss my preacher. You know what they're looking for? They're looking for somebody to not just burn, but shine. Yeah. You need to go to your job and start shining. Yeah. You need to go to your work and let them know you got something. Yeah. That's why when Billy Sunday and all these guys would walk into work and, and, and Charlie Finney, people would just fall down. They felt the power of God at the factories. Because the men took something to work. They went, oh, I got to go home. I, my, the, the, my wife said, hey, come on, get a life, brother. Hey, hey, shine, baby, shine. Shine, baby, shine. I don't want to just burn. I want to shine. I want my grandkids to shine. That's why we got them reading biographies now at six and seven and eight and nine years old. Well, did you ask them? No, we told them to. We take away their choices. You ain't getting all that Hollywood. Yeah. You're getting biographies Amen. written on their level. One of them got a little smart aleck with me and he said, Papa, we got to do something here. He's about nine. He said, I read this stinking biography about ten times. You better get me some new ones. <laughs> I got him some new ones. He's hungry for it. He's hungry for it. One of them wants to be a missionary already. Hey, burn, man, burn, 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 burn. I don't want to just, I don't want to just uh, shine. I want, I mean, shine, burn. I want to shine. I mean, I got to wrap this thing up. I'm not done, but I got to wrap it up. Whew, I hate telling this one. I got a, uh, I I'll tell you two more when I'm done. I was uh, cutting through Detroit one day, and I was out looking for people to witness to. And I saw this guy in the gas station. And I said, hey, why is this gas station all picked up? He said, man, you're in the wrong neighborhood. There's wrong. I mean, there's bad people. People on the streets can dictate to you how you look at the light of the body is the eye. They don't look at your biceps or your clothes, your eyes you look at. And uh, so I'm over there. I said, I said, hey, man, why is the traffic all packed up? He said, man, you're in the wrong neighborhood. I ain't worried about these dudes. I want some gas. I want to go home. I'm right on the border of Dearborn, Detroit. I was born in Dearborn, but I lived in Detroit all my life. I was born right on the border. And uh, he came over there. He said, man, you for real, ain't you? I said, yeah, let's go to lunch. He said, you don't know me. I said, I know I don't. I'm Brother Patterson. I'm a Baptist preacher. He said, I need God in my life. I couldn't believe it. I said, let's go get a ham sandwich. We get the ham sandwich. But you ever come to Detroit, Brother Castle? I'll, I'll take you. I'll let you pay for it. And uh, <laughs> they're, they're, about, they're, they're about this thick. You know, they slice it off right. And ain't nothing to see through ham that your wife cooks. So you, you know, ladies, you want to fix your husband, put some ham on the sandwich, okay? 
I'm trying to help your marriage out here a little bit. God bless you. Yeah, but most of you women got see-through ham. You know, I see you. <laughs> and uh, But these hams are about, I got a picture in my phone. I'll show it to you for evidence. And then they're about this thick. And they got navy bean and split pea in that. I've taken everybody there. Bob Nagowski, uh, Brother Ryman. I mean, I've taken everybody. Bill Grady, other heretics. I've taken all kinds of people there. And uh, and so we, we get over there. And he says, uh, he said, well, what do you want with me? I said, I want to invite you to church. He said, man, I'm a Christian. I'm going through some rough time. I said, yeah, I can tell that. I said, hey, man, I, can I come pick you up for church? Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you're going to be there to pick Yeah, I'm going to pick you up. Well, can my mom come too? Yeah, your mom, your dog, your cat, anybody. You want to come to church? I'll take you. I'll pick you up. I picked him up for about a month. Got his van fixed for him. That was 10 years ago. He's the PA guy now in the church. Clothing his right mind. Amen. All he needs is someone to give him a chance. Amen. He needs someone to shine. Yeah. Not just to burn. Not just a burn. Had a guy come down to uh, in the intercoastal. It's 40 miles. Once you got to the boat dock, you go 40 miles on the water, and then you get to the island where we're at. And one day I got a call on the radio. Brother Olaf called me. Jack, brother Olaf, I need you. He never said goodbye when he talked to you. He just he just hung the phone up. Click. You know, he done talking. He said you shouldn't talk long on the phone. Click. <laughs> and I, I called him back one day. I said okay. Click. <laughs> got him back. <laughs> Don't get mad, get even. It's in the Bible somewhere. <laughs> and so, Brother Castle, I, um, I I got a call from Brother Olaf. He said, uh, he said, Jack, he said, I, I, I need you, uh, I, I need you to bring so and so in my office in the morning. I said, Can you get there about seven? I said, Yeah, we'll get there about seven o'clock. Once you get to the boat dock, I got another forty-five minutes. To get so we left out about four in the morning, five. Well, as soon as we got daylight, we get there and we're sitting in his Brother Olaf's desk. He got this old long phone cord with the cord on it and a uh, table in his jumpsuit. Uh, with his little house slippers on, and he's sitting there, and he didn't drink coffee. Oh, my goodness. And uh, 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 he said, did you obey the rules uh, while you were there? Oh, I, don't know. I, I can't eat health food. I mean, health food is nasty. It's in, you know, <laughs> and we, 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 uh, we, we changed things around a little bit, okay? And, but I, I kept the rules. You couldn't have no coke, couldn't have nothing, and, uh, man, I gave up my cigarettes and my beer. No, I was kidding. And uh, we're sitting there, and he said, J he said uh, I got some good, I got some bad news for you guys. He said, Teddy, he said, called this guy's name right on it. I mean, he put his name out there. And he says, uh, did, you, did, you, did you steal some dope from somebody? I said, yes, sir. I took some dope from the mob. He said, well, they, uh, they've sent a killer here to get you, a sniper. This guy comes into town looking, casing the place out. And he... Um, he gets in the place and he get, rents a boat and comes down to the island. And he wants to find out where this kid's at. He's going to pop. He's going to shoot him. It's a, it's a mob hit. He takes it and he, and he calls his mother before he leaves the boat, uh, Pastor. He said, Mom, I'm in Corpus Christi, Texas. His mother says, well, so-and-so, oh, I want you to go hear Brother Roloff preach. That's the guy he's got to go put a hit on. It's from that preacher's home. He heard he knew the name Lester Roloff. He said, I want you to go hear him preach. He said, what am I going to do? I got to go sh shoot this guy. And this guy, my mother loves this, this guy's preacher. So he goes down there and takes the picture. And he does a very wise thing. He calls Brother Roloff up on the phone, the, the hit man. And he says, uh, so-and-so, so-and-so. And about that time, I'll back up a little bit. He had already sent Brother Roloff the picture and he had the circle around this guy's face. And there was a guy in a blue jumpsuit standing next to him. It was me. I was 22 years old. And he said, tell this guy never to come back to Dalton, Georgia for 30 years. I'll tell him I couldn't find him. That happens every day in America. This guy, you think, you see, tragedy, some, tragedy will never stop you. It'll take truth. This guy gets out. He gets out of the home. He goes out and do, does things. He marries another girl thinking a, a woman's going to make him happy. Truth will only set you free, not a woman. Truth will. I'm just about done. Wheels are down. I'm circling the field. He marries this girl, and they get off on dope again. His little kids come out to get some Cheerios to watch cartoon one morning, and there's Mama hanging from the rafters. She hung herself. She couldn't take the sin and dope no more. 
This guy comes and falls to his knees, and he's not a wimp, he's not a punk, but he's a man. He's weak. He fell to his knees and cried. They stick him in a, a mental ward outside of Atlanta, Georgia. While he was in that mental ward, they took his Bible from him. He said the first thing they did, they wouldn't let me have a Bible. My sister was in the same mental ward after she saw her two kids burn up in, in, in a fire. And 30 years later, she came back to her house. The house was on fire again. She ended up back in, back in the mental ward again. I got two of those stories to tell you how God turned her. They meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. This guy's in the mental ward, and he calls a preacher named Lee Robertson out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. And Dr. Robertson took the phone call, always took collect phone calls from the jail, the pastor. That's greatness. I'm, the wheels are down. You don't, don't get this. And he calls this young man. He, he said, uh, I'm such and such name. I'm out of Roloff's home. And Brother Roloff said, if, uh, he said, if I die, he said, you call two preachers, Jack Howes or Lee Robertson, and you tell them I said to call you, they will help you. He said, I, I decided to call Lee Robertson because I can get to you. Jack Howes would have helped him, would have took him on. Lee Robertson took the phone call the same day. And he goes up there and, and he said, I want to see you when you get up. Young man, just come to my office. My, you don't need an appointment to see me. Just come on in. Tell me who you are. Come on, come on. And he, he hung up the phone. He, I mean, he prayed with him. He shows up there. He gets this guy in his office. He tells him a story more in detail than what I told you. I'm talking about a burning and a shining light. Sometimes you just want to burn. But God knows how to turn that wick up. He'll turn that wick up on you. But you got to keep the soot off the glass. Unconfessed sin. Had a staff member back up a minute. Well, let me finish this story. Um, he gets over there and he sees Lee Robertson. Lee Robertson finds out he's been to Bible school. He said, I want you to come back to Bible school. I'll pay your school bill. Long story short, he's this young guy. He's 50, 49 years old now. And he can play basketball like Larry Bird. He was real good. And, uh, and he goes in there, and he graduates tops of the preacher boy class at 49 years of age. But well, wait a minute. But when he saw his wife hanging in the rafters, hung herself, that little is a shorty. He said, Dr. Robinson, what am I going to do with my life? My preacher's gone. I've been a heroin addict. The mob tried to kill me. My wife hung herself in the rafters. He said, won't you go to little churches that no one will ever go? He said, I can do that. He knew how to preach, but his limitations was cut off. For 20 years, that rascal went to small churches every Sunday and preached in churches that didn't have pastors. And Dr. Robertson set him up to go to Bible school and went in there and teach and preach for 20 years. I'll see him next week. We're having lunch. He's, eight, he's almost 80 years old now. He still calls me J.K. McKay, my hook shot from the side. John Havacek, number 17, Boston Celtics. That was my shot. A burning and a shining light. A burning and a shining light. Let me ask you a question. Are you burning today or are you shining? I'm not going to let a chair stop my, my potential in, in, my, in my life. That slows me down, but it's not going to stop my potential. Amen. I want to shine in this seat. Oh, why are you in that chair? I'll tell you about it. Come here and sit down. I'll tell you how it all happened. I went him to Christ. Why don't you take whatever's bothering you and give it to God? That's right. Won't you, won't That's you right. get the Bible? Won't you get your King James Bible and just go ahead and just wipe off the soot off the glass so that your light can permeate more out? You know what to put the soot on the glass, of the spiritual glass? Anger, bitterness, yep. frustration, yep. vengeance. I had a staff meeting a few years ago with a guy. I, I moved everything out of Alabama, had a raid. I got all that worked out. A bunch of they, they, now, they're, now they're begging me to stay, stay down there. <laughs> I said, make up your mind, man. And, uh, but I've had a bunch of them down there come down. And I had staff members want to kick kids out because they weren't paying the school bills. I said, no, I'd rather get rid of you. I'm going to keep the kids whether they got money or not. There's they're no one going home. Which one staff member um, sued me for 20000 Said I owed him $20,000. I'm, 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 I'm going to finish with this. I got mad. I brought him down there, trained the ministry, trained him. He's a little bean counter. You learn your phlegmatic, learn your temperament. Uh, I'm big on the temperament. Phlegmatic, cleric, melancholy, sanguine. They're all different. They're all spelled different. 
Things are different. They're not the same. And find out your strengths and weaknesses. Read a book, Spirit Controlled Temperament. Read it. Read another book. Uh, uh, um, I forget what it is. Um, Ordering Your Private World. That's a good book to read on leadership. And I get over there and I said, and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I got to get this guy out of my heart. I, I, I've, I've allowed him in there. Are you listening? Oh, yeah. See, I stopped shining. I got mad. Listen. I got mad. <coughs> the Lord said, pray for him. I said, oh, brother. Mm. Then my, Lord, my prayers were short. Lord bless him. Yeah. Come on. Lord bless you, brother. Yeah. Lord bless that dude. <laughs> I think I said some other words. Uh, I ain't going to tell you. <coughs> I'm a man. Men come from dirt. And one day I found out his daughter had brain cancer. I love that little girl because the dad's an idiot. So I would go by at 2 in the morning. I'm coming into the ranch. I'm a, I'm a mile from his house. I don't want to make no noise. And I'd stop by the driveway. And I'd pray for his little girl. In a matter of weeks, in a matter of a month, the attitude in, in my heart and that towards that man was changing. I made a deal with him. He thought I owed him money. I didn't know him, but just to settle all the arguments, he had a lien on my property. I paid him off. Didn't say a word. I, I gave him a check. Said, God bless you. I left him alone. Two weeks ago, I'm in, I'm in an office, and the Lord tested me. Sometimes the Lord will test you if you really get something out of your heart. I see the halos on your head out there. I see a few horns popping up, too. <coughs> so-and-so said, hey, you know so-and-so? You know so-and-so? I said, yeah, they're good men. Tell them I said hi. I felt so good of myself. That was the guy that sued me. Tell them I said hi. Tell them I said hello. And then I said this. Tell them I mean them at the Dumb Seat of Christ. We'll work it out there. Don't let money, greed, somebody stole from you, somebody lying about you, pour it out. <coughs> somebody got your job, somebody lipped you. Oh, I, uh, uh, <coughs> somebody stole my truck one time, brand new truck, Jack House. Brand new truck. I come out the driveway, it was gone. Within two seconds, I was on my knees as the cop car pulled up. And he says, uh, what are you doing? I said, I was on my knees thanking God for stealing that truck. He said, you the owner? I said, yes, sir. I started crying. I said, I've stole more cars and people's trucks, and I probably messed up their lives than I can imagine. They had to go to work the next morning, and I took their truck, and I sold them for parts. And see, this guy's looking at me like, I've never heard nothing like this before. I said, I've never done nothing like this before. But I asked God, I said, Lord, can we call it even? They took my truck. Can we just kind of call it? Forgive me. Yeah. Hello. Come on. Now help me out up here. Yeah. I don't want to just burn. That's salvation. I want to premiate. You got to let stuff go. Yeah. Hey, Jack, clean that shut off the glass. Get it all cleaned up. But if you don't put that, you don't wipe that shut off the glass, it won't come, the shine won't come. I just wonder today who needs to take an old rag in your spiritual life, come out in an old fashioned altar and say, God, I got some shut. I got to get off the glass. I've done it or I've allowed someone else to put it on there. And Lord, today, by the blood of Christ, I want the shut off. I want my joy back. I want my laughter back. I want my freedom back. I want my family back. I want my family to see Christ. I don't have it like I used to, Lord. You, you don't need to think about coming. You know what you need to do already. You, you do what you got to do. Did God speak to you about something? Then come on. Would you do that right now? Come on. Come on. Father, thank you for the Bible. I pray, Lord, you take home this simple truth. Thank you, Lord, for the Bible. God, help us to get the set off our spiritual glass. Pastor Castle. Let's stand with our heads bowed this morning. Do it, do it now. Now's the time to do it. Lay it down. Get rid of it. Now's the time to make that decision that you know you ought to make and you're too stubborn or too proud. Swallow your pride and just say, Lord, I'm going to get, get that off of me. Time to do it right now. Hard feelings. Even hate, bitterness, anything like that.
this. Father, do what ought to be done right now in Jesus' name. We're going to say, Search me, O God, and know my heart today. You got something you need to let go of today? Have you got something you need to let go of today? It, it's, the devil's using it to hinder you. You can't grow until you just get... Oh, Danny, you don't know what they've done to me. No, I don't. But it ain't what, like what we've done to Jesus. Let it go. Let it go. wicked way in me. Cleanse me from every sin. Come on. Come on right now. Come on right now. God's speaking to your heart. You come on right now. Amen. Amen. I praise the Lord Amen. for cleansing me from sin. Amen. Fulfill thy word and make me pure within. Fill me with fire. Amen. Where Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Grant my desire to magnify thy name. She's playing softly while these are praying. Maybe there's somebody else you're holding on to something. I just ain't gonna do it, preacher. And you know, if you got hard feelings, it ain't it ain't hurting the person you got the hard feelings toward. It's hurting you. It's like cancer. It's hurting you. Human nature's stubborn. Amen. Let go of it. Let go of it. The Bible says, forgive one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven us. That makes perfect sense. Amen. Amen. All right, enjoyed that. Say amen. amen. Man, I could listen to that stuff all day. Me too. My, my. Consider yourself blessed. We are one of the few groups left in the country that's hooked to that group. Amen. J. Frank Norris pastored the two biggest churches in America at the same time. Ain't that right, Brother Jack? Down in, in uh, Fort Worth, Texas and Temple Baptist in Detroit, where he got in. Beach at Vic, and then, of course, uh, Dr. Ruckman. And uh, they won't give old Ruckman credit, but he kept the whole crowd straight on the right book. Amen. He sure did. And they'd die before they'd admit it, but he did. Amen. And have we got any more plaques, Brother Jack? Okay. He's got beautiful, beautiful plaques. Uh King James 1611, I got one to go on my wall. He got, uh, made by the Amish people, Solid Oak. And then that, that CD he's got is tremendous, absolutely, y'all. It's the Highlanders, uh, the Highl singer. You don't, you don't hear stuff. You can turn on Christian radio nowadays and good night. You honestly can't tell from if it's rock, soft, help rock, or contemporary. You can't tell the difference. And it's sad. It's pitiful. It's pitiful. And so... Uh, I tell you what we're going to do. Come on, we're going to take up an offering for Brother Brother Patterson this morning, and we're going to give you a chance to invest in his ministry. And we're going to give him something. We'll take care of him. We got uh, his motel, food, and everything. But we're going to give you a chance to invest. He's going to build a new home in Detroit. And I'm telling you, people like that just—they're about all gone, y'all. They're about all gone. I got in on the tail end of that when Brother Ed, Brother. Dr. Ruckman, I've heard Roloff in person, I heard uh, John R. Ice in person, I heard Siler in person, I heard uh, Billy Kelly, Mays Jackson, all them guys, and it rubbed off on me. And I'm going to rub it off on y'all. Because I know some of y'all will, you know, all y'all be dead for me, I reckon. I'm just kidding. <laughs> some of y'all, I'll be visiting you in the rest home one of these days. But uh, let's give. Uh, whatever you give. Go to him and his ministry. Go ahead, take off, fellas. Uh, while they're doing that, everybody, uh, take off, pass them plates. 
Amen. We need one over yonder on this side, Ethan. Put that other offering here. And, uh, and while they're doing that, go down this uh, on the other side over here, Jeff. Stick it in. He'll be down this side here in just a minute, y'all. Amen. Reach across two or three people and put it in. Come down this way. Come over here. Turn his mic back on. All right. All right. Hold right there where you're at. Before you leave, I just want to show you the influence of Dr. Ruckman's influence. I, uh, I was in a tent revival about uh, eight years ago with a guy preaching named John Hamblin. He's a sort of a Lord evangelist. And I said, I don't know what your problem is about the King James Bible when the book you print endorses D.O. Moody believe the King James Bible. He said, That's, you, you don't know what you're talking about. I said, I know what I'm talking about. Call your, your, your preacher there that runs the soul of the Lord. They knew other Ruckmanite, and uh, I'm a Bibleite, but you know what I mean. So they called the soul of the Lord, and they checked up the chapter 1899 when D.O. Moody's funeral was preached. They asked, see, asked Schofield preached it. But he asked D.O. Moody's son what were the two influences in his father's life that built the great Moody church right in 5,000. 1899, the Philadelphia church age. He said there was two things that influenced this is book. It was book. It's been printed by the sword sitting on the shelf for 30 years. Wow. But here they fought the king's end, but yet they were endorsed it, didn't even know it. Amen. But I'm a reader. If you're going to be a leader, you got to be a reader. That's right. That's right. And so they read the book, told me. I said, no, put the speakerphone on. I want to hear what you guys say. <laughs> They put the speakerphone on, the guy read it. He said, there was two things that influenced my father, quoting his son, 1899, in the book printed by the sword, and that John Arise didn't believe. And so uh, many, many times, never brought it up to him. I was afraid, whatever. He said, there's one thing as my father was influenced when he helped the young men of the Christian Association, the YMCA in Chicago. Amen. He said, then my father had a great, immense power over the people because he used the Anglo-Saxon King James Version of the Bible. Amen. To this, to this day, to this day, they use that as promotion for the sword of the Lord that they believe the King James Bible from D.O. Moody. Taught by an old Ruckman boy on the, on the fly at a tent meeting in Detroit, Michigan. Didn't need Greek, didn't need Hebrew. I need a little history. Amen. But thank you for the old German that was faithful to give it to us. Amen. 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 All right. Thank God for that. I have tremendous amount of gratitude in my heart. Uh, I'll tell you it's the whole story how it happened one day. If I hadn't got my feet solid on that King James Bible, I'd been in bad shape because if there ain't no Word of God, what, we're in trouble. If there ain't no such thing as the Word of God, we're in trouble, y'all. It either is or they ain't. So thank God for the old book. Now we'll meet back at 6 o'clock for the icing on the cake. Ain't that right? We're going to have fun, ain't we? We're going to have fun, Frank. And listen, uh, uh, the, the Centrons are going to be with us tonight. They're going to be singing. Y'all got some songs, right? Ready for us? Deacons ready to sing? The deacons will be singing tonight. And they've got all kinds of instruments and everything. And I know they're tired. They got in at 4 o'clock. So uh, we're going to uh, take, make, make sure they get some rest. They're going to our house, I'm assuming. Uh, and we, my wife ain't done nothing all weekend, so we'll take some company. No, we, we got some checking out from Florida, some checking in from Missouri. Uh, so uh, uh, we're excited about it and looking for a big time in the Lord. So uh, Brother Jack will be back there uh, uh, at the back, and um, he'll, he'll, he'll be glad to talk to you for a second, but don't take up his whole day, and we'll meet back at 6 o'clock this evening for the icing. You don't want to miss tonight. Six o'clock. Pray for these folks traveling back home, Tennessee, Texas, Maryland, West Virginia. Pr please pray. Uh, Lord will get them all home safely, okay? All right. Uh, let's, uh, let's pray, and then we'll uh, fellowship just a little bit. Don't miss tonight's service. And uh, come back. If we can get Peppa Pig to come, we're going to get him to come. I'm gonna see him. He might be home. All right. Ready? All right. Let's pray. Uh, Brother Gary? How about you dismiss us? We do that?